Welcome everyone to Rome and a swanky reveal event for the brand new Ferrari Roma. First up, a press conference and several espresso sharpeners, then we've been promised 15 minutes to ourselves with the car, which is not a lot. So do excuse the slightly rushed nature of the film and chopping between different colours. Here it is then, the new Ferrari Roma, a new front-engined V8 GT. Ferrari is calling it a plus two rather than a two plus two because it has two very small seats in the back. But in terms of rivals, what is it? It's a rival to the Aston Martin V8 Vantage, the AMG GT, but you could probably throw in the 911 Turbo, the McLaren GT, maybe even a DB11 V8 in there. Incredibly, this is the fifth brand new car Ferrari has launched in 2019 alone. We've had Coupe and Spider versions of the F8 Tributo, we've had the SF90 Stradale, we've had the 812 GTS, that's the flip top version of the 812 Superfast, and now this. And just before we get into the details on this car, I thought it might be useful to um, place it in Ferrari's V8 family because it is getting quite sprawling and quite complicated. So here goes. Um, at the top of the tree, we've got the GTC4 Lusso T. That is the big front engine V8 four seater Grand Tourer. Then you have the Portofino V8 front engine with the Cabriolet. And then you've got the SF90 and the F8 Tributo taking care of the hardcore mid engined V8 market. And then there's this. What is it? Well, it's a bit faster, it's a bit more dynamic than a Portofino, and it plugs a hole in Ferrari's lineup. Now, the cynics out there may just call this a Portofino Coupe, but clearly they've done quite a lot more than just weld shut the folding roof on a Portofino. It's an all new design inside and out. Details, right, let's get into the tech because it is related to the Portofino. It has the same wheelbase. It's slightly wider, it's slightly longer, it's slightly lower than a Portofino. In fact, 70% of the chassis components are new. Uh, there were rumours that this might feature the new V6 hybrid powertrain, but no, that is coming, just not quite yet. Under there is the familiar V8, so 3.9 litre twin turbo V8. In the Portofino you get 600 horsepower, here it's been juiced up to 620 horsepower and it's connected to the new 8-speed DCT gearbox, the dual clutch gearbox we first saw in the SF90. Performance is quite strong. Partly because of that extra grunt, but partly because it weighs less than the Portofino. You don't have the complicated roof mechanism going on, so it weighs about 75 to 80 kilograms less. 0 to 62, 3.4 seconds, 0 to 124 miles an hour, 9.3 seconds. Top speed over 198 miles an hour, which should be plenty for anyone that lives in the real world. Now, enough numbers, let's get on to the design because it's a new Ferrari, it's always going to divide opinion, but I'll just lay my cards on the table straight away and I like it quite a lot. Interestingly, when I first saw this car, I was getting a lot of DB10 vibes. That's the DB10 prototype that Bond drove. But then when you get closer in and you look at this front end, there's actually quite a lot of Ferrari Monza in it. Monza, that's the multi-million pound special without a windscreen. Lots of Monza in these raised front wings, these headlights, the way that this grille, which I love the kind of retro perforation by the way, slopes back. And then you take another step back and you start to appreciate the surfacing on this car. The fact that it's a return to a bit of fuss-free Ferrari styling, it's pure, it's elegant. Um, Ferrari references the 250 GT Lusso from the early 60s. Personally, I'm seeing a bit more 456, 612 Scaglietti. The doubters on the internet are saying there's a bit too much Jaguar F-Type in these rear haunches. Fair play, each to their own. Come around the back, because there is more to see. There's not much space, so we're gonna have to crush in there. Again, I'm getting 456 vibes around here. This sort of rounded rear end, these twin tail lights on each side, and the four quad exhausts at the bottom. It does have aerodynamics, this car, despite looking like it hasn't been shaped in a wind tunnel. This section here, with the Ferrari logo on it, that is a movable rear spoiler. It's got three positions, depending on how much downforce you need, and you can see it's not a hatchback, it's just a normal boot that pops up there. I'll be honest, the first time we saw pictures of this car, the first time that we posted them on topgear.com was four or five slightly dodgy renderings from Ferrari, and didn't do the car justice at all. In the flesh, you can really appreciate the detail and 
just the proportions and the simplicity of this car. And the great thing is that the simplicity carries on on the interior. Now, Ferrari could have just plugged in the interior from the Portofino itself, uh, a development of the interior scene in the California T, but no, they've gone all new in here. And the spine of it all, the centerpiece, if you like, is this raised center console. And what that does is create two kind of sectioned off cockpit areas, one for the driver here and one for the passenger over here. In front of me, we've got the usual button fest Ferrari steering wheel, but it's a little bit different. Um, instead of the three stage Manatino you get in a Portofino, this is a five stage Manatino, so you've got a race mode. It's got side slip control built in. Uh, up here you've got touch pads for your thumbs, just like you get on the SF90, the engine start button is a touch button. Of course, you've got the indicators up here on the wheel as per usual. Now, behind the wheel, an absolutely enormous digital instrument display, the biggest I've seen, I think. And then in the center of the dash, a new portrait-oriented screen here. Ferrari taking a leaf out of McLaren's book there. Over here, although it's not lit up now, is another screen in front of the passenger. So they get their own info display over there to see how fast you're going, what sort of revs you're doing. And again, here in the middle of the dash, I've already mentioned this is an eight-speed twin clutch gearbox, but the gear selector here has been styled to look like an open gate click clack manual, a, uh, a trick first seen on the SF90. Should be cheesy that, but secretly, I quite like it. Now we need to talk about money. Um, there is no price yet for the Roma, but we can make an educated guess because the Portofino starts at 168 grand in the UK. We can only assume this is gonna cost a little bit more. 170, 175 grand justified, of course, by that extra 20 horsepower. So what does that make it? 50 grand more than a V8 Vantage, but about 30 grand less than an F8 Tributo with no options on it. Yeah, so this is very much the baby Ferrari, but still quite a senior car. 